On the shores of the great sea on the god star Sirius, I sometimes look upon earth and our root race, destined, truly destined to embody the sacred fire of the Divine Mother and to set the example of the paths of east and west for the raising of the sacred fire, that there might be in the earth those becoming the God flame, those becoming gods might set this example of the white fire of the mother and in the dimensions of the geometry of the fourth ray and the white cube of the mother to surely, surely bring those to the very peak of their liberation. You have longed for Sirius. You have longed for the great violet blue sea. One day you may return. See to it that you have the wind on in your sails, the wind of the Holy Spirit, that you can make it all the way to oneness in the white fire core of your I Am Presence. Now as you are in the earth, you are the oldest among its evolutions. I speak to you then of the coming of aliens to this planet, those who are called extraterrestrials, those who have come accompanied by fallen angels and demons. You have seen them enter. You have seen them pull down the evolutions of Earth. And the pity of it all is that some of you have been pulled in their direction and continued in their direction, not recognizing that you originally were never a part of these that have come from other planets such as Maldek and the 12th planet and certainly many others. These visitors are not welcome for the most part, for though they may be benign in a sense of the word, yet their goal is not union with God, but to be worshipped as demigods themselves. Thus, what is the point, beloved? Yes, indeed, what is the point? To want to conserve oneself in a physical body or quasi-physical body forever and forever? Is that not odd that there be some who should just as well wander the galaxies as to find the very heart of hearts of the creation to merge with it in the plains of nirvana and to spiral upward and backwards into the point of origin of being? These visitors, beloved, are not the creation of Elohim for the most part. Therefore, they come to steal the genes, the very essence, the life essence of those who are the creation of Elohim. You of the fourth root race, then, on your shoulders is the burden of calling for the judgment of those who would come to steal what Manu has given to you indeed the genes and the pattern but that not all a coil of fire from the cosmic Christ the beating of a heart that is not merely the beating of an animal heart but a heart that beats for God has poured the essential oil of himself into that heart and that heart one day shall be transmuted, and that heart shall be the living heart of God. That heart shall contain the all of self, and you shall rise and know the meaning of true oneness with God forever and forever and forever. The war that must be fought and won is the war of those who are the sons of God, the children of God, and the root races, that have been sent forth by Elohim. Therefore, beloved, your calls for the binding of the dweller on the threshold of fallen angels have never been more important in your entire history. For in so far as you give those calls and reduce the momentum 
of these fallen ones in their ultimate science and technology. So you will see the diminishing of their power, you shall see the liberation of Earth, and you shall see that you will have protected the new sixth root race and ultimately the seventh root race from having to engage in these ancient wars, warriors and warfares, such as the war that cost ultimately the sinking of the continent of Lemuria. Thus you are here as a cosmic cleanup committee to deal with the leftovers, the burdens that you have not tended to, the responsibilities that are so far back in the mists of Lemuria as to almost seem as though they no longer matter. Well, they do matter, beloved. They matter a great, great deal. Every drop stitch you must pick up. Pick up the drop stitches and see then how you can also weave a tapestry, a tapestry of life, your life. And therefore, at no level of the gauging of time, at no level will there ever be found again an imprint of negativity that was your own. This is the time to clean up planet Earth, to see if you cannot attain to a level of victory so high that you may desire to retain embodiment and train the children. I give birth to those of the sixth and seventh root races. This is indeed a high calling and a choice you can make if you have balanced good percentages of karma. The future of the Aquarian age may lie on the foundation of the wise ones who have not been too proud to take up this path and this teaching and to take it up under a teacher who is, as you would call, a woman in this earth. So understand, beloved, that that pride must go. It is a pride of superiority of many long centuries behind you. But today, that pride does not serve you well for it causes you to be vulnerable, to have a chink and many chinks in the armor, whereby the fallen ones who know your weaknesses continu can continually tear you down, break you in pieces, and show you just how far your pride will take you. They mock you. They will mock you, members of the fourth root race. Yes, indeed. Show them what the fire, the white fire of God can do for constructive purposes and the constructive purpose of eliminating war in the earth. War is an absolute perversion of the fourth ray, beloved. It is a perversion of the white fire of God and the nucleus of the atom and all of the misuses of energy that have gone into destruction instead of into constructivity. Many of these designs and engines of war have been brought to earth as you know the story of the coming of these laggard evolutions 500,000 years ago as clocked by some. So, beloved, you can see what a weight has been on the planet and how this weight must be lifted. Can ye lift it up? Can the world mother lift it up? Can all of us put together lift it up? I tell you it will be an act of all evolutions of this world and of the great central sun also, for the weight of extra karma that they have brought with them, these scientists who are interested in materialistic science only and not the science of the spirit, they have brought the heavy, heavy weight of earth. And the elemental life since that hour have continually been working to balance that karma. And many times they have had to resort to tremendous cataclysm under the direction of Elohim and Surya and Kuzco and the four hierarchs of the elementals. Thus continents, as you know, have risen and they have sunk and civilizations have occurred on the earth long before that which you think to be the beginning at the early days of Lemuria. Blessed ones, time is vast and the weight that is upon your shoulders today is a weight that you carry, a portion of these laggards who have come to earth so long ago. Had they not been invited by certain among the people of earth who desired to save them, to lead them into the light, and to help them in bearing their progeny, 
this earth would be a lighter place. But in addition to their recalcitrance, their ultimate stubbornness, their ultimate intransigence, they then have burdened all. Think not then that the burden of weight that you carry on your shoulders and in your aura is merely your own. You all, one and all, have volunteered to bear some portion of it. And thus, beloved, Saint Germain, in his infinite mercy and compassion, has brought to you the violet flame. And those who did not have the pride and reject it as these laggard evolutions, but those who walk in the spiritual path who have accepted that violet flame, they have become lighter and they have lightened the burden of the earth. So you see, beloved, there are some who have become angry or annoyed as to why they must carry the burden of the laggard evolutions. Well, it goes back to exactly what I have just told you, that those individuals living on earth at that time decided to invite them, the remnants of those who do not, did not destroy themselves in the war on Maldek. Thus they came to earth, for they had destroyed their own planet. And today, again and again, you see these warring factions who will never relent, never give up, never say die, and never enter into the communion of the Lord Gautama, the Lord Himalaya, the Lord Vevasvata Manu, the God and Goddess Meru. Come to understand that the great divine director has a plan. The great divine director has a plan for the root races, and for this entire hemisphere, it is a scientific interchange of life streams coming together to ultimately defeat the powers and forces of evil in this earth. I assign you, therefore, together with those who have planned this conference and the Ascended Ones speaking, and that is to enter into a labor whereby you call for the binding and the judgment of laggard evolutions whose time is up, who have defied God, who have been obscene before his presence and have no desire whatsoever to attain everlasting life. I tell you and mark it well the time, the day and the date of my statement. This is the hour and the moment when the Lord God Almighty would say through me to you, enough is enough. These evolutions have had their opportunity. They shall be removed to other planets and other systems where they can make a go of life if they will. Therefore, in addition to the judgments being brought by Archangel Uriel of the fallen angels whose time is up in this year, there is also the dispensation whereby certain laggard evolutions can and must be removed from the earth for their weight is critical it is critical, beloved, because it can tip the scales toward darkness if these particular life streams are not removed. A place is prepared for them, and therefore they may continue at their pace. And one day, in the millennia to come, they will also face the opportunity to live, to embrace God, and to escape the final judgment and the death at the court of the sacred fire. Thus, beloved, this is a dispensation that the tribes in the earth who have mourned, mourned the coming of the laggards, have waited for, for centuries upon centuries. This day and this hour is come, and already in this moment there are ships that are taking these certain laggard individuals who cannot remain another hour on planet earth. They shall be taken in the astral plane. They shall be taken in the etheric plane. Some may have a remainder of themselves in the earth, but most of them, beloved, will be taken, and some of them will wait until their logical conclusion of their lifespan. But those I speak of today are those who must be gone. Thus I enlist your decree power and your momentum not only in this conference, which we would like to see sustained forever if we could, but every day after you leave this place, remember, there are souls of darkness 
who are weighing down the youth of the world, the children, the babes being born, families, and light bearers who are working against all odds and not even with enough of the coin of the realm to complete their projects for humanity. Yes, these ones, beloved, these precious ones must know a surcease from the groaning and the burden upon their backs. I tell you, beloved, also, as the messenger has been given a mantle, even as the messenger Mark Prophet was given the mantle of the messenger, so these messengers have borne the karma of the planet Earth with the assistance of many, many, many life streams. But the responsibility has been upon them. Therefore know that in this hour, because of the removal of certain of these laggards, that this messenger who does sit before you will know a surcease that she has not known in centuries for the carrying of world karma.